Okay, confession time. <laughs> I binge decluttering and organizing videos. They are my happy place. So soothing, so nice. You start with a messy space, you end with a not messy space. Everything is right and good with the world. <sighs> So is this all just mind numbing content that we can zone out to? You know, sure. But what if there's more? I ask myself, what am I really getting out of these decluttering videos? If you spend any time watching decluttering content, you may have run into Dana K. White. She has a YouTube channel, which I will link below, a podcast, a blog, um, some books, uh, courses, all the stuff. And she's developed a popular decluttering method that folks use in a really practical way. So practical that I've been wondering to myself, can I apply these practical principles to my productivity life? Is there more to it? You know, here at you to do you I love running experiments. So let's see what we can brew up. Okay, so Dana has a five step process, but let's jump ahead to one of the key elements. So as you're trying to improve a cluttered space, you pick up an object and you ask yourself, where would I look for it first? And she says, then take it there. Take it there now. And when you get there, you plop that object in or on its new home and you move along your merry way. But wait, what if you arrive at that object's home to find it already full? Aha, <laughs> now you've hit on a limit of space. You have now encountered what Dana calls the container concept. What do you do when the area is full? You can't ask a container to hold more than the container can hold save for flying phone booths traveled in by certain fictional time traveling doctors containers only are as big as they are you can't shove 75 crayons into 64 crayon box um you know without creating unwieldy crayon chaos so sure yeah you can stuff a drawer that holds your food storage bowls into the tippy top, but is it really usable? Are you muttering swear words to yourself every time you dig through the drawer to find a matching lid? Nah, no. We're talking here about usable space. She says you need to declutter down to what fits comfortably and usably in the space. If the area, the container, Dana's theory goes, is full, you have to let something go. Perhaps it's the object you just brought there. Upon arrival, you know, you realize, eh, it's not worth it. There isn't room and you just don't need that thing. Or maybe you wanna swap it out for something that is in that space. Perhaps something that was shoved in the back of the drawer that's just sort of forgotten about or that you don't use very much, that could be discarded. Or maybe you discover that you have a duplicate that you previously purchased because you didn't know that you had two of them. So, you know, you could just choose the nicer one and let the other one go. No matter what, the key here is that you're letting the area where this object lives be the bad guy. The space can dictate how much you can keep there. You can just keep your favorites in the given container and let the rest go. You don't have to ask complicated questions that bring up emotions or questions that have you sort of clinging to things like, does it bring me joy? Or will I need this someday? Or what might I use this for? Just load up the container with your favorites and the rest can go. It is not about whether you love or like an item or if it has value, but simply, does it fit? Now, containers can be literal containers, baskets and bins and so forth, but everything else is a container too. Your drawer, a shelf, a closet, a room, your house. You can only fit in all of those spaces what can actually fit in those spaces. So once your containers are defined and you see that they can't fit anymore, you have to let something go. Okay, so mm, we're zoning out on our decluttering content in my happy place. But wait, this is a productivity channel. What is uh, this decluttering method that I'm zoning out on have to do with personal productivity? Well, I think Dana K. White's decluttering advice is actually productivity advice. You'll get some time back if you don't spend all your time managing overflowing containers of items where you have to dig through your stuff to get at what you want. When you waste time going out to buy duplicates because you can't find what you already own amongst all your stuff, your crap, well, that is time you could use for other things. 
Things are just more pleasant, let alone productive. What if you got to spend more time enjoying your meal, knowing that you wouldn't have a massive hassle when trying to put away the leftovers because you didn't have to deal with that, you know, overflowing Tupperware drawer? What if your morning cleaning routine went that much faster so you could get to your desk and get stuff done because you didn't have to deal with excess water bottles spilling out of the cupboard when emptying the dishwasher? You know, that's good stuff. But let's push it a little further. Can we run an experiment here? Can we apply Dana's method to a different kind of container, an intangible container, the container of your schedule, your calendar, your time? Now, we all have a finite amount of time on Earth here. Sorry about that. And the problem is that we don't know the size of that container. None of us knows how much time we have. So let's maybe not go to that size of container. It's not really realistic to plan now how to fill your lifetime's container worth of stuff anyway. So yeah, let's take it down a notch. Back from the entirety of your time on Earth to say, you know, something more near term. Let's just go with like your calendar and your schedule for the next week. Well, Wait, first off, do you actually have a physical or digital calendar? If not, you may have a problem assessing these container questions. In fact, you may even feel overwhelmed just from the task of trying to remember your schedule, let alone assessing if you fit the right amount of stuff in it. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna recommend uh, starting with making sure you actually have a calendar and that it actually has your appointments and commitments in it. Having a calendar that you can actually view would probably make this intangible container of time that we're dealing with a lot more knowable. And by the way, I have a whole other video on all the different ways that you could use your calendar. So I'll be sure to link that in the description box below. And I'll also put it on the end screen of this video. So when you get to the end, you can check that out. So after you have your calendar, physical or digital, the first step would be getting clear on the container that is your schedule. What's the general like architecture of your week? When do you go to bed? When do you wake up? What are some of those like non-negotiable bricks that are stuck into your schedule architecture? And then after that, you know, do we have a shoebox worth of space here or a walk-in closet worth of time? Now, before we answer that question, let's add another element of Dana K. White's methodology here too. So remember, Dana's criteria for what fits in the container is what fits comfortably and usably in the space. <laughs> Did she make up that word, word usably? I don't, I don't know. It works. So anyway, I'm using usably. It's a good word. Okay, so she holds it as kind of a universal truth that nobody is going to comfortably use a closet that has, you know, the clothes falling off the hangers from lack of space and sweaters spilling off the top shelf because there's too much stuff. So, you know, you need to take it back to the actual size of the closet. But for you, you might even need to go less than what the closet can hold. See, she talks about this concept called your clutter threshold, and everybody's threshold for items in their space is different. Some people can tolerate more objects in their environment than others. The point is that when you have too much stuff for you, your stuff turns into clutter, thus the clutter threshold, the moment when it turns into clutter. So how many objects can you manage in your home, in your office? You know in your life. Minimalists would say not many, and of course the big box retailers would tell you, you can always fit more, buy more stuff. But you'll need to figure this out for yourself. And the point is that maybe you can keep the amount of clothes that your closet can fit, or maybe you just keep a capsule wardrobe for the season. You know, maybe there's a shelf that has some empty space on it and your linen closet isn't stacked to the actual top. And you know, that drawer where you keep your food storage containers has airy wide open vistas of the bottom of the drawer. How will you know that the right amount is for you? Well, Dana says you'll know when you get there. You'll experience a sense of relief. There'll be like an ah that comes, you know, uh, arrives when your space is no longer overwhelming to you. Okay. So back to your calendar and the schedule. So let's borrow again from Dana here and ask, what is your clutter threshold in your calendar? How much stuff can you personally tolerate? Well, let's take a look. When you look at your calendar at that, you know, shoebox of a schedule, do you feel overwhelmed? Are you not feeling that sense of like, ah, uh, <laughs> and if so, then maybe we got to take some steps to clear some junk off that calendar. Like, 
for reals. Don't you deserve to have your calendar and your time feel like, ah, uh, I think so. Okay, so taking some of that stuff off your calendar, yeah, it might be, you know, a little harder than dropping some junk off at the thrift store, but let's give it a go. Okay, so Dana's first step, start with the trash. Is there anything on your schedule that literally doesn't belong there? It's unlikely, but you know, let's check. Do you have an outdated doctor's appointment that actually got rescheduled? Or I have a personal example. I had some recurring time blocked out to go to the pool several times a week, but an injury that I had is starting to heal up. So it looks like I can start walking again. So now that pool time is out of date and I can junk some of it. Cool. Second step, Dana says, do the easy stuff. All right, okay, so what is some easy stuff that you can get rid of from your calendar? Like no emotions involved, no difficult decisions, no brainer stuff, just easy stuff. So maybe there's a meeting with your team that has outlived its usefulness, or maybe you waste time in traffic and uh, you know commuting to your work and you actually are allowed to work from home. So great, two days a week, you work from home, no disruption to others. Nice. Okay, so step three in Dana's process is what she calls duh donations. Anything that's easy and obvious to pass off. Maybe you're invoicing your clients, but it turns out that your assistant is perfectly capable of invoicing and you're only doing it because you've always done it. Time to pass off that invoicing. Or, you know, maybe your kids are old enough now to do their own laundry. So teach them to dump in that detergent and take that off your plate. Okay, so you've gone through these first three steps. Trash? Easy stuff, duh donations. I love it. Dana's practical system is working here in our calendar. I knew binging all that decluttering content was good for something. All right, so let's check in and see how this feels. After you get that stuff off your schedule, do you have that uh, feeling yet? Are you below your clutter threshold? You may need to test it for a few days or weeks to see, and if not, it's time to dig in a bit further. Okay, so at this point, we'd be in Dana's step four of her decluttering process, but I gave it some thought and I think it, the analogy kind of breaks down here. We'd be sort of torturing it a little bit. So let's just skip step four and we'll move on to step five. That's the one where you discover that the container is just too full. And at this point, she has you do a little bit of sorting process. You put like things with like things so you can assess. In the physical world, this would mean like gathering together your towels that you put in the bathroom linen cabinet. And you know, at that point you see, okay, oh, well, some of these towels are ratty and are really just rags and go along in the rag bin. And okay, we have like 15 guest towels, but we actually only have room in our house for two guests. So maybe let's just keep like four guest towels. And yeah, so you could just go through the process like this, culling your least favorites until the remaining towels fit on the shelf. All right, so let's try to apply this step five to your schedule. I don't know if it's gonna work, but let's see. So you start grouping together like things. And I don't think this means like putting back to back like things in your schedule, though I suppose you could do that, but that's not really the point. I think what you're doing here is considering categories of activities or commitments and evaluating them against each other and how they fit into your schedule. We don't often evaluate trade-offs within categories of life, so I think this is kind of fun to play around with. However you wanna group them that makes sense to you, I think could probably work. You could go like granular within your day, like how much time with clients versus how much time working solo versus how much time with your team, or it could be broader categories like all work items grouped and then all like self-care items grouped and then social and family items grouped. Okay, let's let's try that. So maybe you look at all of your planned self-care for the week and looking it over, you see that you've got three yoga classes and two Tai Chi classes and you've got your batch cooking on Sunday morning and you've got a little home spa day planned for yourself. Well, that all sounds nice, but you also want to spend some time with your family who are coming in from out of town this week. So maybe some of your self-care time has got to be borrowed by your social time. And then you could look at your array of self-care times and see which one has got to go. Maybe some Tai Chi needs to be plucked out. And then maybe your self-care home, 
home spa day can just get pushed to next week. As Dana says, it's about embracing the reality of the space that I have and asking which one of these things are more important to me. Which one of these things deserves space in the container more and then pull out the least favorites until the stuff that's left fits comfortably and usably in the space. I like that. No guilt, no hassle, no getting down on yourself because you didn't hit your Tai Chi goals for the week. Okay, did we do it? Did we extract some productivity tips out of our guilty pleasure zone out decluttering binging? I like to think so. Yeah. And if you agree, please give this video a like so others can find it and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Oh, and that calendar video I mentioned should be hovering over the screen somewhere now so you can click on that to keep the love going. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.